adamantium teeth gleamed in the sunlight as servos let out a deep, rumbling growl. The mighty Reaper chainsword Androcles roared to life, eager to earn new victories and glories to its name. Mackay had stood in defense of Molech since the old times. The ancient knight had seen the Emperor himself set foot on Molech, as well as several of his great sons. It had seen the betrayal of House Devin and the dark times of the Great Heresy. For thousands of years, Mackay had many masters, won many victories, and joined in the great hunts across the jungles of Astara for the vicious maul beasts and flesh titans of Neropia. And now, this great machine of war and his proud noble pilot Teleos, forced to do the work of menial foresters, every fiber, every ounce of being both in the machine spirit and the pilot felt disgust as the legendary blade Androcles cleaved through another one of the ancient trees. The massive tree crashed to the jungle floor as every manner of creature fled from the night. The knights were not pleased that their hunting grounds were being culled. The great hunts were now just butchery. The titanic beasts that had been such worthy adversaries were now being mowed down and rendered into mere rations. The great jungles were being hacked apart and used for war material. There were whispers that the Inquisition were involved with the defense of Molech, and even the great night houses were wary of crossing them. Gallus's ogrens worked alongside Flesher's Cadian battalion, hauling and loading every bit of wood they could. The fortresses and cities that dotted the landscape would make use of them somehow. But for the more important reason for this mass deforestation was to deny High Fleet Kraken the vast reservoirs of biomass that lived in the jungles of Molek. Fletcher walked towards Gallus. They're making progress in all sectors. I know the knights don't like doing peasant work, but this plan would be impossible without their help. Gallus nodded. We are on schedule. Once everything is all said and done, we'll have these strategic pockets of dense jungle. And if all goes according to plan, these Xenos will be lured to these locations to feed. And they'll meet our dense formations of Hydra tanks and other anti-aircraft weaponry. Fletcher watched Gallus's ogren shouldering a massive tree that was being hauled to a makeshift mobile sawmill to cut everything to be hauled away. Bonehead Biff kept them on task. Og was a little confused as to what this had to do with killing the bad bugs, but he was happy to do whatever it was that they were doing. It's going to be bad, isn't it, Gallus? Fletcher folded his arms. Ordo Xenos is involved? The knights are willingly cutting down their ancestral hunting grounds. And if the rumors are true, there are full companies of space marines involved in the defense of Molek as well. We will have our work cut out for us. Service to the Emperor is never easy, Fletcher. No. No, it is not. By day's end, the jungles had been reduced to tempting little banquets of biomass. The men were exhausted from the day's work. Even the ogrens had burned off much of their raucous energy. Og's natural excitement still held out, as he followed Bonehead Biff, whose own eyelids were beginning to droop. I cut down and carry lots of stuff today. If I keep doing a good job and do whatever Commissar Gallus says, I bet they'll make me a Bonehead too. Biff chuckled to himself. You're not ready to be a bonehead yet. Og looked crestfallen. Huh? Uh, why not? Being a bonehead ain't about doing what you're told. Mostly, you gotta be the boss and tell the other ogres what to do. And you ain't never been in a proper fight, Og, and you ain't never been boss before. 
You're smart and you love the Emperor, but you're not ready. If you was, Gallus would have made your bonehead already. Uh, I can't be bonehead. Do good in the fight. Then maybe they make you a bonehead. The next morning, Gallus, Fletcher, and the other commissars and commanders filed into the command tent for their briefing. Colonel Braddock addressed the assembled officers. The Imperial Navy made contact with High Fleet Kraken last night. They have since been making a fighting retreat back to Molek. We simply don't have the numbers for a proper confrontation. Even with Lamenters adding their fleet strength, an open battle would be futile and a waste of resources. The Shadow and the Warp has now covered Molek, and communication and warp travel is now impossible. So, we defeat the enemy here, or we all die here. There is no retreat. We should have contact with the enemy today. You all know your assignments. Execute your duty with honor. The Emperor protects. The assembled officers echoed Colonel Braddock and began filing out. So, the Lamenters were the mysterious chapter that had lent their strength to defense of Molech. Given the chapter's reputation, this did not sit well with everyone as officers steeled themselves for the task at hand. Gallus knew his task. This fight would be a long, slow one if things worked out as planned. Once the High Fleet began to make planetfall, all of the Imperial units would be dedicated to blunting the initial attack. If they could prevent the planet's defenses from being overrun immediately, then they stood a fighting chance. This meant the Ogrens would have to wait before they could get in close where they could be most effective. Gallus led Biff, Og, and the other Ogrens to their assigned places in Fort Alki, which was one point of the Astara Triangle, a series of fortifications and gun emplacements surrounding what the Cadians had dubbed Bug Bait Forest. Fletcher even let them put up a makeshift sign to designate it as such to welcome the new Xenos guests. Gallus could see explosions in the upper atmosphere as clouds of spores gathered. Gallus stood above his ogrens as they all waited in an ogren-sized trench, eagerly awaiting the big fight. Biff stood beside him with his huge arms folded across his chest. Ogrens, the enemies of the Emperor are upon us, and the bad bugs are here at last. The Ogrens cheered and rattled their ripper guns. You're right to celebrate, for we have the gift, the honor, and the glory to be on the front line in service of our emperor. We will be able to give our lives in service to him, and what man wouldn't be jealous of us? Hmm? We who march side by side with the emperor who watches over us. For when we take our last breath, when our lifeblood leaves our body in service to him, then we will be with him for all eternity, continuing to fight his enemies wherever they may be. Come, vile Xenos, feel the Emperor's wrath, for his servants are here, and we will make Molech your grave.